Howdy everyone, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. I just sat down today and started editing my video on my 2020 hand load part two. And I realized I just didn't have all the footage that I wanted. So I'm going to approach this a little bit differently than I had anticipated. We had quite a bit of rain while I was filming this. So I had to come in and out with the camera and I just wasn't able to get everything that I wanted. So I figured it'd be easier to walk through the process a little bit and then just show you some of the footage that I do have so you can understand how I went through this process, you know, what my setup was, and then how I came to my hand load. And so now that I had my bow tuned, I went ahead and got my two Sirius arrows. These are the Sirius Vulcan. It's a 250 and 300 spine. The day before I started shooting, I actually brought my bow in to get tuned. I had them check the center shot, the timing, among a few other things. And I highly recommend doing that because if your timing is off, you know, you're never going to get the tears that you want. And so I would recommend going into your bow shop. I think they charged me like 15 bucks to check these things. So it wasn't super expensive. And I went ahead and started shooting into a block target, similar to how Ranch Ferry does it. And I was about 10 yards away and I was shooting into the block target with a weight on top of it, as you can see in this picture. And the reason you put the weight on top of it is so you don't get some skewed arrows. If, if the arrow hits hard enough, it can make the block turn a little bit and you'll end up having some bad results. And that's kind of the same reason you don't want to use a bag target either is you know the arrow can hit in and, and bump left or right or up or down. So that's why you should try and use a block target. It'll give you your best results. So I started shooting at the block target and I could see the left and right pretty easily, but the up and down was hard to tell. And not to mention, I couldn't see my results next to each other. And so that bothered me a little bit. I wanted to be able to see what my previous shots looked like and compare them to what I just shot. And so, you know, it had started raining and I decided to pack it up for the day. And the next day I came out and I set up my do-it-yourself archery target and paper tuning setup. And I went ahead and pulled up a chair so I could get lower to try and be more level with the target. And I was about, again, 10 yards away and just started taking some shots. And with paper, you can really see what's going on with your arrow. And so I was getting some very severe low tears. And so I messed around a little bit. I, I backed up to 15 and 20 yards and was still getting the same issue. And I brought it into about three to five yards and it was, it was getting a little bit better. I thought part of the issue might be I'm not quite level with the target and the paper. So my arrow was going in on an angle or something so that it was giving me some weird tears. So I decided to try getting onto my knees and just shooting from my knees for a little bit. And that seemed to help a lot. And then I did some research and I realized you really want to be relatively close to the target. So I got within about six feet just because what you're looking for is how the arrow comes off the bow. You know, if you're out at 10 yards, 20 yards, something like that, you know, wind can play a factor. There's just so many other variables and you're not truly getting the way your bow is shooting. So my final setup ended up being about six feet away from the paper tuning target and on my knees so that I was at a level trajectory. And just as a heads up before we go into some of these images and I go through what my tears ended up being, I'm shooting the Diamond Infinite Edge Pro bow. I have a 27 and a half inch draw length and I'm pulling about 65 pounds. Even at that setup that I was at, I still wasn't too happy with how my arrows were shooting through paper. So I decided to pull out four other arrows that I had used testing four or five months ago just to see how those shot through paper as well. So I pulled out two gold tip hunters at 300 and 340. And then two Beeman ICS wideouts at 300 and 340 as well. Now we'll go ahead and go through and look at my results on paper. So we're gonna start by looking at the Sirius archery arrows. So here on the left, I have my 250 spine, and here on the right, I have the 300 spine. So you can see here that the 100 grain tip 
had a, a pretty severe low tear. And then as you go up to the 125 grain here, the 150, 175, they're all pretty similar. They all have pretty severe tears. And then it kind of got a little interesting as I got up to the the 200 grain and the 225 and, and higher. They started to tear a little bit right with each one. So this 200 and the 275 tips weren't actually bad results. And if I wasn't doing so well at the Beeman ICS 340s, I probably would have started adjusting the bow a little bit by moving the rest maybe a, a tad or even changing the draw weight some to try and make this 200 or the 275 a little bit better and looking at it the 275 is seems to be a little bit closer so I probably would have started with that one and, and then you can see when you get up to 250 and 300 that you know it was a pretty severe right tear when you look up here at the 300 spine, really they're all pretty similar tears. Everything is a low and slightly right tear, and nothing here was promising. And, and so starting with these arrows, it was actually pretty frustrating results, seeing as I, I had consistent form. I had just gotten the center shot set up by the bow shop. It had been tuned. The timing was good. And so I had some frustrating results, but I decided that I was going to pull out my Beeman ICS and my gold tip arrows that I had done my original testing with and just see how well I did with those. So let's look at those results now. So here are the results for the Beeman ICS 340 and 300 spines. So on the left, you have the 340, and on the right, you have the 300. So the 300 spine looks pretty similar to what I was getting with the serious one. Not as severe load tears, but it was still a low and right tear. But then I got over to the 340 spine and they were much tighter holes. And, and so I was pretty confident seeing the 200, the 225, the 250. And then you can see as it's, it's going up, it's getting smaller and smaller. And so I really liked the results of the 300 and the results of the 275 here. And so I, I kind of made a mental note and, and said that those were two that I was going to come back to and, and test a little bit further. And so then I went ahead and moved on to the gold tip hunter, which looking at the gold tip hunter, you know, the 300 again, similar results to the Beeman ICS as well as the Sirius arrows. But the 340, I was actually, you know, getting a little bit better results. And I was hoping that as I got closer to 300, I'd start getting bullet holes again at 300. I'm not far off. And if I hadn't had the Beeman ICS, again, I, I probably would have done a little bit more testing here. But you can see the 300's pretty close. It's still a slight low and right tear, but it's not that far off. And really none of these are. I think you can make adjustments on all these to make them work. But I had such good results on the Beeman ICS that I wanted to continue testing that one. So it was getting a little late, but I wanted to test at 5 yards, 10 yards, and 15 yards with the Beeman ICS 340, 300 grain tip. And so I went ahead and did that. And you can see the 5 yards, which I was at originally, still had a pretty good bullet hole. The 10 wasn't too bad, and the 15 had you know a little bit of a right tear, which is kind of consistent with any of the tears I've had. They've really been low and to the right, but I, that can all be adjusted out in tuning. So the next day I went ahead and did a little bit more testing with the Beeman ICS Whiteout 340, and you can see some of my results here. So this is with the 300 grain tip, and again at five yards, a pretty good bullet hole at 15 yards you know I had a, a pretty good bullet hole and then a slight right tear which is more of kind of a, a consistency issue on my end and then at 15 yards I had two pretty good bullet holes so I was pretty happy with these results and then I went ahead and jumped over to the 275 tip and as you can see with the 275 tip at five yards again I had pretty good bullet holes as we saw in the original 
at 10 yards, I was starting to get the pretty severe low and right tear. And then at 15, you know, I had one that seemed like a pretty good shot, but then I took two more shots and they both were pretty severe low and, and right tears. And, and so given all this stuff, I went ahead and decided that I think, you know, my hand load would be best with the Beeman ICS 340 wideout with the 300 tip. And again, I, I go back to the fact that there's a lot of inconsistencies in human error when it comes to this. So, you know, make sure you test three, four, five, six times just to, to make sure you have the correct hand load for you. Now I've gone through and I've showed you all my tears on paper and all the shots that I took. I wanted to talk a little bit more about how I got there. So I think a lot of people may only have two arrows and not have six spare shafts they can test and that's okay the ranch ferry actually just posted a video and i'll put a link in my description on it but it's kind of a troubleshooting video and he talks about how if you had all the same exact tear similar to what i had seen on my bow that it's not necessarily you it, it could definitely be your bow and you know it, if it is he suggested just kind of getting finding the arrow that was the best and adjusting your rest or your knocking point or lowering your draw weight, you know, lengthening your arrow, just tinkering around a little bit to find that perfect load because the better it's going to come out of the bow, the better shot you're going to have and the more lethal your shot will be. Well, that's all I had for this video. My next video in part three, I'm going to show you how I insert tune as I build my arrows. I'll go through my knock tuning process and I'll talk a little bit about clocking and fletching your arrows as well. I'll go into a little bit more detail on fletching, on whether it's worth hand fletching your arrows or if you should just buy shafts with fletchings on them or even use the 3D printed zinger fletchings. And I'll kind of give you my experiences using the three of those. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and tune in next week for more content like this. Thanks.